What's going on guys, this is Sam, and today I wanna to talk about what I consider to be the biggest difference between Android and iOS. I feel like what I'm about to do is the equivalent of starting out a college essay with Merriam-Webster defines this as this, and then just talking about the definition of something rather than defining it yourself and actually thinking about it. But I wanna bring up these statistics because they're kind of a meme at this point, but they're, they're factual. They are from the developers of Android, and it's a pie chart of Android data collected during a seven-day period ending on December 11th, 2017. It also mentions that any versions with less than 0.1% distribution are not shown. You can see right away, Marshmallow is huge, Nougat is huge, Lollipop is huge, KitKat and Jelly Bean also have a very large portion as well. But here's the problem. Android Oreo, which is the latest version of Android, the equivalent of iOS 11 right now, is only found on 0.5% of all Android devices in the world based off of this official data. 0.5% is a very small number considering that other versions like Nougat, Marshmallow, and Lollipop, Lollipop has about 26%, Marshmallow has about 29 to 30%, Nougat has about 24, 25%. And then Oreo, which just came out in fall of 2017, it's been a few months now, just like we've had iOS 11 for a few months, is at 0.5%. Meaning that 99.5 of all Android devices on the market are not running the latest version of Android. I can see that on my Galaxy S8. That came out all the way in March or April of 2017 and it is yet to be updated to Oreo. Now Google makes Android, so the Google Pixel devices like the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL, and I think there's some Pixel tablets as well. Those devices have Android 8.0, they have the latest version, because Google is able to distribute that like Apple is for iOS, because Google makes the software that everyone else builds on top of, they can just send it out to their Pixel devices and everyone can be on the latest version, just like Apple can do for iOS devices, iPhones, iPads, and iPod Touches. The problem lies in every other Android developer out there and when you get carriers involved it gets even more complicated and convoluted because I have the Samsung Galaxy S8 with Verizon I have to wait on a specifically tailored update through Verizon from Samsung built on top of Google software to be delivered to my device at a date that I don't even know is for sure coming. Of course, I wanna be fair, Apple also publishes information about what percentage of iOS devices are on the latest version of iOS. So we go over to their developer site, just like we were on the Android developer site. Apple says that as measured by the App Store on December 4th of 2017, 59% of all iOS devices are running iOS 11. Now that's a big chunk, but that is a lot lower than previous years. There are still 33% of all iOS devices in the market as measured by the App Store on December 4th running iOS 10, which is a software that is older. I was surprised to see that number that low for iOS 11's adoption rate. I think that's just because so many people have heard bad things about it. It is pretty buggy still. There are a lot of glitches. There have been some pretty big security flaws for Apple software in the second half and fourth quarter of 2017. I think a lot of people are resistant to upgrade. But even that, iOS 11 is on 59% of iOS devices around the world. For Android Oreo, the equivalent latest version is on 0.5%. This is a really big difference. 0.5% for Android 8.0 compared to 59% for iOS 11 are two very different numbers. Where over half of iOS devices are running the latest firmware, not even 1% of all Android devices are running the latest version. And for me, that's a big deal because that means a lot of users, 99.5%, don't have the latest features, may not have the latest security patches, and may be using an outdated piece of software already even though they just bought their phone in the second half of 2017. It just seems like a crazy idea to buy a $700 phone, but know when you buy it that it's running a piece of software that came out the year before. It would be like buying the iPhone 10, but you had iOS 10.0.2 on it instead of iOS 11.0 or 11.1. .1. When a lot of people compare iOS and Android, I think they get caught up on a lot of surface level stuff, as I do all the time. Whenever I'm reviewing an Android phone, I'm like, well, iOS has this feature, why is, why is that on here? Like, this is trash. Or, wait, my iPhone doesn't have this feature, why, why do I not have a swipe keyboard in, in 2017 on my iPhone, like pre-installed, built in? by default. And if you get caught up in those, then you're just constantly gonna be arguing with yourself forever. You know, do I want this feature, do I not? I, I think if you're debating Android versus iOS, you have to go down to the very core, which is how they're distributed. Apple makes iOS, Apple does not license iOS to anyone else. Apple has exclusive rights to iOS and what devices it runs on. I think a lot of companies would be interested in purchasing rights to using a version of iOS and tweaking it, but that would create a really big issue. And while I said for the longest time, well, I want my Android phone to be able to 
run iOS or my iPhone to run Android, you get a big problem there, and that's fragmentation. That's what you get with Android. I'm not saying that's a bad or good thing right now, but it's a fact that the Android experience is fragmented across a number of different devices that are all running a slightly different version of software. On the other hand, Google makes Android, and Google also makes Pixel phones that run Android. But unlike Apple, the big difference here is that Google licenses that software to other Android cell phone manufacturers like LG, Huawei, Samsung, OnePlus. They license their software, which is Android, to run on those devices. And the big problem here is that when you do that, you lose a lot of control. So Google likes that though, and a lot of Android users like that. I would argue that that's the biggest draw to Android in the first place is customization. You can do so much more on an Android for customization and adding features than you can ever do on an iPhone. Because Apple is that centralized authority, they own the rights to iOS, and you can't really customize it unless you jailbreak. But with Android, Samsung, for example, can change Android to make it run and look the way that they want it to look on their Samsung phone. It would be like if Apple licensed iOS to OnePlus 5, and the OnePlus 5T ran iOS, but it looked a little bit different. It was the core that iOS is, like the structure of the home screen might look the same, but at the same time, the icons are different, the software is different, control center isn't there, it's been named as something else, it's been tweaked a little bit. But Apple doesn't do that because they like being the centralized authority, and with Apple and iOS, you're guaranteed a pretty standardized experience regardless of what device you use. Where with Android, on non-Pixel phones, you're getting a version of Android that is still Android, but it looks different, it might have different apps, the icons might be tweaked, uh, it's just a different version of Android built on top of the core that is Android, where iOS is the core that is iOS with nothing else on top of it. So while Google makes Android, they license it to other companies, other companies can use it, they can make it their own and customize it to run on their phones, like Huawei's phones or LG's phones or Samsung's phones, the way they want it to run. Apple doesn't do it that way. They have iOS that runs on all iOS devices and that's it. No one else gets to touch it, no one else can buy it, Apple does not license it. So to summarize, Apple is very centralized where Android is very decentralized. And the problem with decentralization is that you don't have a central authority making sure that everything gets shipped out smoothly, securely, and efficiently. Because there are a lot of Android phone makers, Samsung, Huawei, LG, a number of others, they don't have anyone telling them you have to ship this version of Android by this date. They can if they want to, but they don't have to. Where iOS is only owned by Apple. Only Apple puts that on Apple devices. So when they ship out a new piece of software, it's already been customized to run on every iOS device and they can push a button and ship it out to millions or now billions of iPhones around the globe. Those are two very different ideologies. Customizable different versions of Android that run on a number of different phones are one version of the same thing that runs on a few phones. And it depends which camp you fall into. For me, I like using iOS. I like the centralized feel and the standardized feel across Apple products that I use. At the same time, I can't customize those things and I lose out on customization. However, Google has done something really cool where with their Pixel devices, it is stock Android. There's nothing running on top of it because Google made Android. That's what they set the baseline as and you can still customize it. The core of Android is very customizable and uh, other phone manufacturers like Samsung and LG can customize the base of Android to look a little bit different, but then users can change that even more. I can't tell you which one is better right now, but I know with Android, it's definitely more complicated, where iOS can be pushed to a lot of devices at the same time, because you're only dealing with Apple and carriers don't even come into play because Apple does not license that to Verizon or Sprint or AT&T or T-Mobile. With Android, a lot of manufacturers get involved with carriers, and carriers put a skinned version on top of Samsung's skinned version on top of what is Android, the base of Android. So for example, I bought the Verizon version of the Samsung Galaxy S8, and to get Android 8.0, it has to be released by Google, it has to be tweaked by Samsung, and it has to be touched by Verizon as well. So that's why it can take so long for Android users to get the latest version of Android on their devices. It has to be released by Google, touched by the manufacturer of the phone, and then sometimes even touched by the carrier. I wanna be honest, I'm not sure if that's how it works in every country, but I know in the United States, a lot of Android phones even have to receive specific updates based on Verizon. So once Samsung will release the tweaked version, then carriers have to go on top of that and play with it more to tweak it how they want it to be, and then finally users get it at some point later. I'm not saying that one is better or worse. You give up customization on iOS 
to get the update the second it's out, where you get customization on Android to wait a little bit more for that update in the future. I want to hear your thoughts on this issue down below in the comment section. Do you like the centralization that is iOS or do you like something more decentralized like Android? Personally, I like the centralized iOS authority. I like getting iOS updates the second they're available. It's a big discussion, it's a big topic, and once again, I wanna hear your thoughts. That is gonna be all for this video. If you enjoyed watching, it does help me out. If you take just one second to drop a like down below, and of course, hit subscribe for more videos like this in the future. If you'd like to help me out and support the channel, you can head over to iPdatoS.com slash merch and pick up a t-shirt or a hoodie. Use this code for 10% off, that would be incredible. But for now, I've been Sam, hope you're doing great, and I will talk to you in my next video.